Super Meat Boy is a challenging platform game. You play as the heroic Meat Boy as he braves increasing challenges through his quest to save his girlfriend, Bandage Girl, from the unloved villain, Dr. Fetus. This game is renowned for its difficulty and will put any person's platforming abilities to the test. As the main character, Meat Boy is fast, mobile, and a cube of meat, but there are many other characters to unlock and play as in the world of Super Meat Boy. You see, no character is built the same in Super Meat Boy. Some will make levels trivial, while others can make levels more difficult or even impossible to complete. With no character rerolls and only my skill to get me to the end, join me in my journey to answer the question, can you beat Super Meat Boy with randomized characters? For this challenge, I'm going to be using wheelofnames.com. This is because Super Meat Boy doesn't have a random character option built into the game. It's simple. I put the name of every unlocked Super Meat Boy character into the wheel, then I spin this wheel at the beginning of each level, and the name that is selected is the character I will play through that level with. So the beginning of our journey starts at World 1, the forest. We're going to be saving the Dark Worlds for another video, but we're only going to be doing Worlds 1 through 5 in this challenge because World 6, the end, forces you to play as Meat Boy and World 7, The Cotton Alley, forces you to play as Bandage Girl. So that's not really in the spirit of the challenge, is it? Nonetheless, this challenge was super fun. At last, we selected level one of the forest, spun the wheel, and got Captain Viridian. Now, before we continue, in every level of Super Meat Boy, Meat Boy's girlfriend, Bandage Girl, is present on the map. Bandage Girl acts as our finish line. All we need to do is touch Bandage Girl, and the level will be completed. I'll also be giving a briefing of each character when we come across them, so you can understand what they do. Our first character of the challenge, Captain Viridian, is from the 2010 puzzle platformer VVV VVV. Compared to Meat Boy, Viridian has a slower movement speed, but the same jump height. Captain Viridian can't sprint like Meat Boy, but instead can flip gravity. Gravity can only be flipped while standing on a solid object though, so this character is very niche, but can come in handy in certain levels. We were able to complete this level super easy, so we quickly moved on to the second level. For level 2, we ended up getting Ogmo. Ogmo is from the 2004 game Jumper. Compared to Meat Boy, he has a slightly lower movement speed and a lower base jump height. But to make up for this, he can double jump, which when strung together, gives him a higher jump height than Meat Boy. Being the second level, we were able to breeze through it and get on with the third. For our third level, we got Flywrench. Flywrench is from the 2007 game Flywrench. Flywrench is a character we want to avoid as much as possible. Everything about him is worse than most characters, his sprint is bad, and he can't get distance from later crucial wall jumps. The only thing he's got going for him is that he can triple jump, but even then, the jumps are terrible. After the first initial jump, it's nearly impossible to gain extra height with the other two. Luckily, this is still the first world, so we were able to jump across the gap with ease. Next, we got The Kid. The Kid is from the unfair 2011 platform game, I Wanna Be The Guy. The Kid can be argued as being one of the best characters in Super Meat Boy. He's just like Meat Boy, except he can double jump like Ogmo. But the Kid's double jump is superior to Ogmo's in height. Showing off the Kid's abilities, we were able to complete level 4, not a problem. For the next three levels, we got Captain Viridian and the Kid twice. We were able to breeze through these levels without breaking a sweat. When it comes to level 8, we got a familiar face. We got Steve. Steve is from the popular game Minecraft, a game about mining and crafting, and also a game I plan on making more videos on. Steve is a character that can be considered cheating. His movement speed is super fast and his jump height is decent, but the real catch is that he can place tiles that he can stand on throughout the environment, and he can literally mine through the entire level. With this, he can bypass almost all levels and avoid most dangers. So, he will be a nice breather when we have been struggling with tougher levels for a while. We slammed that level out in seconds, and next up was Run Man. Run Man is from the 2009 game Run Man Race Around the World. Run Man has a great run speed along with having average jump height, but when you hold down the sprint button in the air, you fly really fast until you hit the ground. He's good for speed-based levels and getting high scores, so because of these factors, we decimated this level. For level 10, we got Steve again, and I decided to actually complete the level as intended, even though it didn't take long at all.
Level 11, we got Headcrab. Headcrab is from the cult classic Half-Life games. He has an average jump height and can thankfully sprint, but it's slower than Meat Boy's. His ability is to stick to walls and climb on ceilings when you hold down the sprint button. Yet, despite those cool abilities, he's a character that we also want to avoid at all costs because he can end up making some levels literally impossible to complete. Luckily, this level was very doable as long as we were fast enough with our jumps. Level 12 was Steve again, and I ended up completing it not as intended. It's not cheating, okay. I had to collect 100 bandages for him. That's every bandage in the game. I earned this, okay? Level 13, Captain Viridian was up to the pitch, and we had no difficulties using their gravity flip for some style points to complete this level. For level 14, we got Jill. Jill is the lesbian protagonist from the 2008 game Mighty Jill Off. Compared to Meat Boy, she has an average speed and jump height, but when you spam the jump button while in the air, she can slow fall. Can all lesbians slow fall? Hmm. Anyways, we completed that level without a hitch and moved on to the next. For level 15, we got Joseph. Joseph is from the 2009 game Machinarium. He has basic movement speed and jump height, but his gimmick is that if you press jump twice, on the second jump press, you do a small flutter upwards. You can only do this once though, until you hit the ground, so it's nothing crazy. And with that, another basic level down, and we only got four left. Level 16, we got Fly Wrench again, and it went off without a hitch. For level 17, we managed to get the main character himself, Meat Boy. Meat Boy's movement speed and agility is superior to just about everyone, and he has amazing wall jumps and air control. So because of this factor, we finished this level with blazing speed. 18, we got Fly Wrench. And we completed it easily, we just had to take it a bit slower and time our jumps. And by completing that, that brings us on to level 19. 19, we got Meat Boy. We died a bit because I was trying to warm up for the later levels. God knows I need it. Eventually, I was satisfied with my performance and we moved on to the last level of World 1. Level 20 is the final level and the hardest of World 1. We managed to get Joseph for it and we completed it smooth as butter. We managed to smash this level without even dying once with Joseph. And with that, we managed to complete World 1 of Super Meat Boy with a random character every level. But it's only going to get harder for us as we continue on to the second world, the hospital. Starting off World 2, for levels 1 through 4, we got Ogmo, Headcrab, Steve, and Headcrab again. We completed these levels without a problem and no deaths were had. For level 5, we got Run Man, and by scaling up the left wall and taking our time nice and slowly through the fan blades at the top, we were able to reach Bandage Girl and complete the level. For the 6th level, we were finally introduced to Commander Video. Commander Video is from the 2009 rhythm action game series, Fit Trip. He's a little slower than some characters and has average jump height, but he is able to briefly float horizontally through the air when you press the jump button again while in the air. Having not played him much, we had two deaths this level, as I attempted to get a hang of his different movement speed. Luckily, it didn't take long before we completed that level. Level 7 and 8 gave us Headcrab and Commander Video. We died a couple times on both of these levels, but we quickly adapted and made it a Bandage Girl.
9 and 10 gave us Steve and the kid. I died a couple times with Steve on level 9, but we were able to easily do level 10 with the kid. Level 11 served as a good reminder that we could still get screwed over at any point in this challenge. Luckily, we got Jill for our character, and with her ability to sprint, we managed to get through it without breaking a swipe. This level could have been run-ending because of these blocks that disappear really quickly. If we had gotten a slow character like Headcrab, that would have been the end of the run because it's not possible for him to outrun that. For level 12, we got Captain Viridian. At first, I was thinking that with Captain V's horrible movement speed, this might be the end of the run. But luckily, I was able to work out a strategy with flipping gravity and actually jumping across the ceiling instead. We managed to complete the level with a bit of trial and error, but we kept the challenge going. Level 13, we got Fly Wrench, and we were able to flawlessly complete it. For level 14, we got a new character, Alien Hominid. Alien Hominid is from the 2002 Newgrounds Flash game, Alien Hominid. Compared to Meat Boy, he's got similar movement speed and jumps. His gimmick is that when you press the sprint button, he shoots his laser gun. And when this is combined with a jump, you gain extra height. Unfortunately, we have to go back to the menu to select him every time we land on him. I'm not sure if this is just an oversight on the developer's part, but Alien Hominid is only available to be selected in the first character selection screen. Otherwise, he is non-existent in the quick character selection. Anyways, with Alien Hominid's agility, we were able to complete this level easy as pie. For levels 15, 16, 17, and 18, we got Ogmo, Captain Viridian twice, and Jill. We breezed through these levels and Captain Viridian came in clutch on the very vertical level that was 17. Jill helped us succeed in level 18 with her sprint, but we still almost choked though. We were able to complete all four levels without dying once. Level 19, we did luck out, because we got headcrab. This level has lasers that are on a timer, so if you were completely unable to get to the top of this wall before the lasers fire again, that's the end of our run. At first, I thought it wasn't possible to scale the wall fast enough as headcrab. I tried and tried with no luck, but I had a gut feeling that if I timed my jump onto the wall just as the laser turned off and used headcrab's increased wall slide height, I would have just enough time to reach the top before it fired again. And with milliseconds to spare on clearing that timing window for the laser, we made it up and grabbed the key. We jumped down and gave Bandage Girl a big hug as she brought us on to the final level of World 2. For level 20, we got a bit of deja vu and rolled Joseph again. I decided to take a shortcut around the building and avoid all the obstacles instead of doing it the real way. We were then able to high five Bandage Girl and complete all of World 2. With World 2 complete, that brings us to World 3, the Salt Factory. Tensions are rising, and with a couple of close calls under our belt, we need a little luck on our side, along with really buckling up if we want to complete this challenge. For the first level of World 3, we got a new character, Nyjah. Nasia? I've heard people pronounce it both ways, but Nyjah is from the 2007 game Aquaria. Compared to Meat Boy, they have roughly the same mobility and are always sprinting. Their gimmick is that when you jump and hold the sprint button in the air, you can slow fall. And, upon releasing the button, whilst all in the air, they shoot in an arc to the left or right, depending on which direction you're facing. We ran through the level, used their ability, and completed the level without breaking a sweat. 
Levels 2 and 3 were easy, as we got Captain Viridian and Fly Wrench. And we were easily able to make it to the finish on both these levels. We cheated a bit on the second half of level 3, but we're going to take any easy way we can get when we've rolled Fly Wrench as a character. For level 4, we got Commander Video, and their horizontal movement speed caused me a bit of grief with the moving conveyor belt throughout this whole level, not to mention the timing of the saw blades down the walls. After a handful of deaths though, I managed to pull away with the clean attempt you're watching, and make it to level 5. For levels 5 and 6, we got Headcrab and Joseph. These levels are vertical in technicality, but we managed to make good work out of them and get to the top of both of them. Level 7 was almost the end of the run again because we got Fly Wrench. We died a bit since you can't go under the middle section because of a salt flow hazard. And with Fly Wrench's abysmal height from getting launched by the conveyors, we were able to just barely make it to the other side by utilizing his horrible triple jump. For eight, we got Jill, and we are finally introduced to the dreaded missile hazards. Luckily, Jill made this easy, and we got it on the first try. Level nine, we got, oh, but the kid, we all love the kid. Any kid, any kid lovers around here? Oh my God, that came out wrong. Don't, don't, don't answer that. Don't, don't answer that. Level 10 was no, not Captain Crunch, but Captain Viridium. We really struggled with avoiding the missiles because of Captain Viridian's horrible movement speed on this one. We died a bunch of times, but eventually, with some precise timing, we figured out how to just barely squeeze by the missiles and make it to Bandage Girl. Levels 11, 12, and 13 went off without a hitch because we got Alien Hominid, Jill, and Run Man. For level 11, we needed a speedy character, and Alien Hominid fit that bill. For level 12, we needed someone who was a decent all-rounder character, and Jill met those requirements. And level 13 just needed to be taken slow, because any character can beat it if you're careful enough. For levels 14 and 15, we got Ogmo and Captain Viridian, and because of them, we were also able to flawlessly complete these levels. Ogmo was able to easily complete level 14, and Captain Viridian was pretty much cheating when it came to level 15. 16 was Jill, and they made what was a simple auto-scroller even more simple. And 17 was made a breeze when we got the kid. With his double jump, we were able to easily get up and down past the missiles. 17 got a bit sketchy at the end, but we kept calm and completed both these levels without dying once. Level 18, we got Commander Video, and I was able to remember the strats I used for this level after a couple deaths. I soon snatched the victory for the level, bringing us on to level 19. For 19, we got Nyjah. This level required us to go all the way down and back up again while avoiding the missiles. Nyjah's movement speed really helped here, and with only one death, we were able to move on to the last level of the Salt Factory. For level 20, we got Fly Wrench. This was bad for us because we needed the ability to have good wall jumps for a part of this level. I ended up dying a ton of times trying to figure out the timing to avoiding these missiles and managing to climb up the wall quick enough. Fortunately, I quickly found out that when Fly Wrench is pressed up against a wall, and you spam jump, he is able to climb straight up the wall without leaving it at lightning fast speeds. Faster than just about any other character, actually.
With the timing down, we grabbed the key, avoided a couple more missiles, and nearly choked at the finish line. But we managed to complete the final level of the Salt Factory. With the Salt Factory complete, we had two worlds left on our challenge. And while this challenge is more of a marathon than a race, we found ourselves quickly closing the gap on the end of this challenge. Hell was next on the list. You see, we've managed to sneak by so far with our skills and good character RNG, but with even more levels in store where we could become hard stuck. We just had to keep track of our lucky stars and pray our skills could make up for any bad characters. For levels one and two of Hell, we got Steve and Ogmo. While I would have preferred to get Steve at later levels instead of the first, I was still happy with the easy breather as we cheated our way around the level and made it to Banish Girl. And Ogmo made level two a breeze as it was a basic auto scroller. Level 3 and 4, we got Steve and Alien Hominid. Steve was able to easily outrun the lava for level 3, and Alien Hominid didn't give us too much trouble in level 4. I'm starting to feel a bit like a broken record at this point though, and these next 9 levels went without much trouble, so I'm going to let the footage play, and you'll get to listen to a bopping soundtrack in the meantime. We're back at level 15, and we got Captain Viridian. This wasn't favorable, because we had to come up with a new strategy for the timing of the dog missile things that get introduced. But, after a couple of attempts to iron the wrinkles out, we were able to grab the key, catch up to Bandage Girl, and move us on to the next level. Blink and you'll miss it, because we got Steve for level 16. He let us complete this level in a blazing 0.73 seconds. We got Headcrab up next for level 17. We died a couple times, but learned the timing quickly with the rolling boulders. We were then able to buckle up and bring ourselves onto level 18. Level 18, we got Commander Video. 
I was fiddling with the idea that instead of riding the moving platform all the way down and dodging the hell missile things the whole time, why not just wait till the last second and YOLO swag jump onto the platform at the last second before it disappeared. Here's my eventual successful attempt, and I felt I had earned some style points after that one. Level 19 was made too easy by getting Steve as our character, and I think I'll just let the footage speak for itself on this one. And finally, we were on to level 20. We got Run Man for this level, and he was able to easily complete it. While I finished this level, I just wanted to take the time to say that if you're still watching this video, I want to thank you all for watching this far. It generally means a lot to me that you guys go out of your way to watch these videos of mine, especially for a little old nobody like myself. And just like that, we were on to the final world of this challenge, The Rapture. This is going to be the most difficult world so far, with more levels that could hard lock us if we get a bad character than all of the worlds combined. We had to hope for the best, and that our skills could carry us to the end as we jumped right into the first level. Level 1 of The Rapture gave us Captain Viridian. We struggled a lot with this level, and as you can see from all our deaths, the difficulty has ramped up tenfold. Eventually, we were able to make it back to where we died. And I jumped down, but got the timing wrong. It looked like another reset. But I then managed to jump not once, but twice over the saw blades. After a couple of seconds of gathering my thoughts, I sent it to the finish line. And level 2 brought us Joseph. At first, we weren't able to get past the push orbs without being shot into a saw blade from the lack of Joseph's horizontal movement speed and jump height. But, after a couple attempts, I learned that if you jump off the wall from higher up, you could maintain your height without being shot into the saw blades. After that, it was smooth sailing to the finish line. For level 3, we needed a character that had decent speed, and that's just what we got with Alien Hominid. Alien Hominid's great movement speed and jump height easily allowed us to get past all the obstacles in this level, and with a bit of hesitation on the last obstacle, we managed to flawlessly complete this level. For level 4, Jill was up. I almost made it to the end on my first try, but I had my doubts that she could make it. Fortunately, I didn't give up, even though Jill's slower airspeed kept launching us into the saw blades. With enough trial and error, we eventually got it, and we were able to clear the obstacles and successfully make it all the way to Banj Girl. For level 5, Run Man was up. We thanked R and Jesus for this blessing, because, similar to past levels, this level deals with disappearing blocks that you had to keep in front of. So, characters without a sprint ability would have been the end of the run for us. With Run Man, we were able to flawlessly complete the level. Level 6 was similar to level 5, so we needed a speedy character. Luckily, we got Alien Hominid. This level has gates on timers that open with a button press and eventually close. I made it to the last button, and we had to pray that we had enough speed to make it through the gate in front of Panch Girl, because if not, we were hard stuck. Luckily, I was able to make it up in time before the gate closed and we completed the level. We got Steve for level 7. Enough said. You know how he works. Commander Video was up for level 8. This level is a vertical auto-scroller, where we have to dodge a ton of saw blades. 
After dying once on a saw blade, we were able to learn from our mistakes and successfully make it to the next level. Level 9 brought us our last possible playable character, Meat Ninja. Meat Ninja is Meat Boy from the future. He's from the game Super Meat Boy, and to unlock him, you have to get 106% game completion. That means you need to get an A plus on every level in the game, including the light and dark worlds, collect all 100 bandages, and complete all warp zones. Compared to Meat Boy, he's always sprinting and has almost the same movement capabilities. His gimmick is that he can teleport. With a precise press of the sprint button before he runs into danger, he can teleport through the hazard for a short distance and reappear, giving him the ability to completely avoid taking damage. This timing is actually fairly hard to get down because of how close you have to be to the hazard. But, as you can imagine, he is extremely overpowered in the right hands and we are happy to get him for this level. Getting into the level, I have never really played Meat Ninja, so I was curious to see if he could teleport through the new hazard this level introduces. These little Meat Boy zombies that sprint at you when you get too close. After a couple failed attempts at us trying this, we figured if it was possible, the timing is way too specific to perform. So we just completed the level normally and moved on to the halfway mark. Level 10 spelled disaster for us. We got Captain Viridian and at first, I thought this was gonna be a cakewalk, but I completely overestimated how fast the Meat Boy zombies ran. And with Captain Viridian's terrible movement speed and inability to sprint, I was going to have to use all of my skills to complete this level. The ceiling seemed like the obvious safe place, but I quickly learned why that was not going to work. With gravity now flipped and no ceiling above Bandage Girl, I was unable to land above her, gain the ability to switch gravity back, and then fall on the platform where she stands. Instead, if I attempted this, I would just get sent into the skybox kill zone. I tried again. This time, I grabbed the key upside down and jumped across the ceiling to the right side. The right side does have a ceiling that we can thankfully stand on, so I was able to get the meat zombies to chase me into the saw blades. With some breathing room, I had to double check if my theory was correct about not being able to reach Bandage Girl upside down. Unfortunately, my suspicions were correct. Captain Viridian's bad movement speed prevented us from moving fast enough to touch her. We bonked our faces on the corner and died. I knew in my gut I wasn't going to be able to reach her that way, so I had to think of a different approach. I then thought if I could flip gravity and grab onto the wall to the right of Banish Girl, I could theoretically still complete the level. You see, even if Captain Viridian has their gravity flipped, they are still able to wall jump. I had to try to grab the wall before I hit the skybox and wall jump down the wall for my life to reach Banish Girl. I attempted it, but I quickly realized that Captain Viridian's horrible movement speed along with the super fast upward momentum prevented me from doing this. This was worst case scenario. I had to come up with something soon or this was going to be the end of the challenge. The only option I had left was to try and complete the level normally, but I didn't even know if that was possible with Captain Viridian. Now, the normal way to complete this level would be to use Meat Boy or an equally good movement speed character. Normally, you could run right or left, bait the enemies into the saw blades, grab the key, and make this pretty easy wall jump around the saw blade, where you were then free to reach Bandage Girl. With fast characters like Meat Boy, this saw blade jump isn't much of a problem to get around. But we weren't playing as Meat Boy. Captain Viridian's movement speed makes it extremely hard to make these easy wall jumps around objects like saw blades because they don't have the upward momentum or horizontal movement speed to quickly and precisely make it around these things. The odds were stacked against me, but I had to try anyways. It was the only option I had. I knew a regular wall jump was not going to have a chance at getting around this saw blade. So I had to bust out a more technically advanced trick. You see, there are a couple ways you can wall jump in Super Meat Boy. The most basic are that when you jump from a wall, you can press the movement button in the direction of the wall when you jump, or you can release the stick or movement keys right before you press the jump button. By holding the movement button in the direction of the wall when you jump, it will automatically make you head back to the wall without much trouble. This doesn't give you much sideways distance, but it's the easiest to perform. By releasing the movement buttons right before you jump, you get sent farther outwards because you aren't heading back to the wall the second you leave it. This allows you to do a wider wall jump, but this comes at the cost of potential upward height depending on how long you stay away from the wall. Now, the advanced wall jump is when you hold the movement button down in the opposite direction of the wall as you jump. 
this sends you flying away from the wall. But, if you're quick enough, you can gain the crazy sideways movement from this wall jump to get around far-reaching obstacles. Doing this can come at a severe cost to your jump height, however, because it takes you that much longer to reach the wall again. But, it was my only shot I had with trying to get around this far-reaching saw blade with Captain Viridian. I tried it a couple times and failed. I thought it was over, and was about to end the challenge, when a miracle happened. Oh, oh, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. Right there. We successfully got around the saw blade and touched the wall. Albeit only for a couple of frames, but a couple of frames was all I needed. If I was quick enough with my jump press to make it in that window of a couple frames, Captain Viridian will jump off the wall again, and I could then reach Bandage Girl. Eventually, I managed to get the jump, and reach Bandage Girl to save the challenge. After coming so close to failing the run, I was more than relieved to get Steve for level 11. Level 11 has a slight developer oversight, where you can run across the top of this mountain as any character without touching the off-screen kill barrier. Just don't jump while you're up there. We easily made it through the level, broke into the final section, and touched Bandage Girl. We got Steve again for level 12, he made it super easy, and I completed the level. I also redeemed myself on my poor performance of World 2 Level 3. I jumped in the air from block to block to reach Bandage Girl with style. Level 13 is a vertical disappearing platform level. This could have been the end of the run if we got headcrab, but luckily we landed on Commander Video. With some precise platforming, we managed to make it to the top and reach our girlfriend, Bandage Girl. Level 14 was made pretty easy because we got Ogmo. We died twice getting the feeling of things, but otherwise we completed the level semi-normally. We jumped down, baited the enemy, jumped across, and didn't even have to grab the key to go back. Ogmo's double jump allowed us to scale the wall and get around the cliff rim, and we moved on to level 14. For level 15, we prayed we had a fast-moving character. Luckily, we got the kid. Our challenge could have came to an end being so close to the finish, because characters without sprint can't keep ahead of the fast-moving wall of salt on this level. But after dying a lot more times than I would like to admit, I relearned the timing of the salt slugs and how fast I needed to go for this level. I flew to the finish line and made it to Bandage Girl with only four levels left. Level 16 is normally pretty easy. All you would do is select Nyjah and do this. So for that reason, I was really hoping for her on this spin. But unfortunately, we got head crab. So it was actually not possible to do that strat with him. <sighs> we should have known it was going to happen eventually. I died a ton with head crab on this level, because by being forced to play with him, this level went from kind of hard to insanely hard. The flying enemies are super hard to avoid if you can't get away from them, and head crab's slow mobility only made that worse. We had to make this large jump and bounce off a push orb to the other side. We failed a bunch, and I had my doubts. But I knew that it was possible. All I had to do was play perfectly. Eventually, I got a massive boost from the push orb, and we made it to the middle. I attempted to climb up and around the obstacles in the middle to reach Bandage Girl, but unfortunately, without a double jump and only Head Crab's ability to cling to the ceiling, that wasn't an option. Eventually, I made it back to the middle, but we weren't out of the woods yet. I still had to make it to the other side. I used Head Crab's wall climb ability to get some extra jump height as we weaved in between saw blades, but we had another enemy blocking our path. I tried to juke it out, but ended up jumping from way too high and fell into the salt. I was going insane at this point. No, 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 dude, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. 
please no anything but that anything but that anything but that i gotta find a way i gotta find a way there's gotta be a way there's gotta be a way i can cheat that there's gotta be a way no 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 no. i was looking for any way to not have to do that but i knew what i had to do completing it normally was the only way Finally, I made it back to the other side and nailed the push orb jumps. All we had to do was make it up the long saw blade hallway and touch Banish Girl. I was nervous, but I knew I could do it. I just had to be careful. Eventually, we made it to the top, and we ran past the enemy into Banish Girl's waiting arms. We were so happy. Okay! Okay, we did it! We did it! We did it! We did it! Oh my! I want everyone to know that if this block was not here, this level would have been impossible. This piece of level geometry saved the entire run, because Headcrab would not have had enough speed or height to make it above this last push orb. Level 17 means that we had three levels remaining. We were in the final stretch, but weren't finished yet. I spun the wheel and got Joseph. Joseph was definitely capable when it came to completing this level. This level is a borderline bullet hell, and after dying a bit to missiles and bullets, we gave Bandage Girl a big hug. Level 18 gave us the kid. I died a couple times, but already knew the strat for this level from my deathless achievement run for this world. Eventually, we dodged the bullets while sitting on the push orb, and we embraced Spanish Girl with open arms. Level 19 gave us Steve. I was super relieved to get him, as he made this level a breeze. I started by going straight through the first quarter of the level, but this didn't come without dying a few times. I then made it to the missile room and quickly dug into the wall. I immediately realized why it wasn't a good idea to stay in line with the missile launchers as one shot down my tunnel and killed me. Luckily, I learned from this, and on my next attempt, I block clutched that stupid missile at the last second. I dug around the level, careful to avoid running into the saw blades that stick through the level. And eventually made it to Bandage Girl. The final level was upon us, level 20. With one level away from beating this challenge, I could taste that sweet, sweet victory. We got Commander Video. I juked out the enemies in the first half, made my way to the middle, and successfully climbed the platforms. But I choked on the missile section. We ran it back. We juked the enemies. Climbed our way up to the platform. Flawlessly completed the missile section. And ran into Bandage Girl's waiting arms. And with that, we answered the question... Can you beat Super Meat Boy with randomized characters? It's yes. The, an the answer is yes. You guys, this was super fun to make, and I plan on making a video just like this on Super Meat Boy's infamously harder side, the Dark World. This video took forever to make, like easily over 20 hours of editing, and multiple weeks long. 
Sorry for not uploading for so long. I was really depressed and lost a lot of inspiration. And then college came around and I've been focusing on plenty of other matters. But anyways, I plan on uploading more often again now. And I also want to expand to other games. This is the return of my channel and I want to come back swinging full force with these videos. So if you guys made it this far, why not subscribe? I got more videos on the way and you can always unsubscribe later. Hit that bell to never miss an upload. And I can't thank you all enough for watching.